Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of The Tartar's Key. So for this episode, I'm including both endings A and B. Um, basically, the game has three endings. Um, the first ending is when everyone escapes, so I'm going to be showing that. The second ending is where we only have Alex escape. I can't show you that one because uh, I saved everybody, I guess. So I can't show you that ending unless I restart the game and then just deliberately fail everybody's um, puzzles, which I really don't want to do because I like these characters, even William with his, with his uh, attitude. And then the last ending, I guess, um, is the ending C. And so for the third ending, it's where you solve the mystery of the mansion. So we're going to do endings one and endings two. So let's get started.
So before you do this puzzle, I would definitely save. There is a bomb in there. If you mess up, it will go off and you'll have to start over from wherever you last save. Um, there's indications around the room that shows you where you can potentially put the swords that would press on the button to deactivate the bomb. So for here, you're going to put the sword in the slot that's on the bottom for the wolf. And then for the cow, you're going to put the slot on the right, um, the sword on the right. Uh, for the crow or the bird, you're going to put it on its wing. And then for the whale, you're going to put it on the very bottom. I agree, Alex. I really don't like that it follows you around um, with its gaze and laughs while doing so. But it did give us a clue about a book that we needed to pull to open the door to the next section. So this sub uh, basement area, um, there's no time limit. There's no rush. You can walk around and look and find out a lot of information about how um, the Tartarus Society it runs things and it also kind of gives you a lot of um, lore in terms of like uh, why they're doing it a little bit and just in general how many people have possibly gone through this before you got here.
So once you finish exploring everything, you can take uh, the key card that Taurus gave you and that will open up these three rooms. So here is a meeting room, across the way is a file storage area, and right next to it is the server room. So according to that email, they've been using the same location for a hundred years and they built the mansion in such a way that if you wanted to try to brute force your way out, you would be unable to. That combined with the binders um, that are heavily redacted, so there's no information on who the victims were, uh, they have um, very large um, pool of people that came through here and possibly never left. So this email gives us a lot of information, um, one of which is that they were fully aware that the people that they were working for were very dangerous and will not hesitate to replace you if you do something that they do not like or tell them something that they do not want to hear. But it also gives us some information that they seem to be doing this every five years. So it's a possibility that in those five years, research and development creates different puzzles and they gut out the entire mansion, rebuild the entire inside with all of these puzzles um, or the specifications of these puzzles and then go from there. Why are they doing it every five years? That's the question. Um, like, what's the reason for having, like, them drop off all these people every five years to complete, like, rituals where they have to escape or they die? Wow, what a delightfully threatening email. So it looks like whoever that person is, is the th true mastermind behind uh, the Tartarus Society. Like, William was part of just the, I guess, bottom rung 
of the society and this person is so high up they're probably like a descendant of the founder of this of this organization but they're so far up that they don't even have an email their email is redacted and they're literally saying like oh it's just their entertainment they're like sweeping under the rug um the fact that these people are uncomfortable they're having like bad dreams people are disappearing left and right being replaced by new people every day or every other day and now they have a problem according to this email where the person who was supposed to be a contestant has already died um and so now they have to replace them and then there's a fact that they have like people saying that they're having all kinds of like dreams and they're seeing things So, to turn on the power, you have to use the cables that you picked up to connect um, the servers and the data ports that are over here on the wall. So, you're basically just taking the cable and you're running it uh, between each of the different data ports here. I think they all have to be connected together. Um, just so that their symbols match up with the computers that are behind you that have like uh, the different symbols on each of the computer screens.
So once you're in the director's room, all you're going to do is you're just going to grab this remote here and then you're going to turn on the TV. Alex will make a comment about uh, the first slide. This is a blueprint for a uh, area that one of the emails had mentioned that said uh, that was where the set director um, broke their neck. So they sent, I guess, the person that kidnapped all of us down there to kind of just like um, get it ready because it's supposed to be a whole nother like, um, I guess, puzzle area like one final puzzle area for the contestants, which is what they're calling us contestants, but for us to do. But once you flip past it, it's going to show you this slide and all you need to do is just hit uh, this painting right here and then that's it. We have officially finished uh, ending A. So all we need to do is just go back and talk to Torres and tell her uh, that you're ready to leave. So something that I want to note, uh, for each of the characters, they have a character epilogue. And so the epilogue, I think, changes depending on what you ending you get. So for this one, this one's considered the good ending. So this is ending A. Um, everybody's alive and everybody escapes. But the character epilogues, even though it says that they've basically gone on to help people and do everything that they can, um, just basically to put their experience behind them, uh, they still feel like that there's something missing, that there's something still back at the mansion that they missed. And then there's ending B, which is everyone's dead. So that's considered the bad ending. Basically, since Alex is the only one that doesn't get put into death traps, um, for any of like the traps that we were in, we were always the ones that were trying to save everyone else because Alex um, has the ability to fail these traps everybody that we encounter can die 
And so when we get down to the bottom floor, Alex is the only person who escapes and that's considered the bad ending. I would definitely make a note of how the epilogues or each of the characters read us because um, there's going to be some slight changes once we do uh, ending C. So this is ending C, which according to the guides is considered the true ending. How you trigger it is that you have all of these people here, uh, everybody is alive, and when Taurus asks you if you're ready to go, you just tell her no. And then you convince her that, you know, hey, uh, there has to be more because you know, one of the emails that you read mentions that there's a floor below this uh, in that you can take the elevator down to or a set of stairs down to that um, goes to a place that they had asked the person who kidnapped you to go down and basically, like, dress up a little um, for the contestants because they were hoping that the contestants will go down there. William doesn't believe that there's like anything that we need to worry about that we just need to leave but I think that that's because according to the other email that we got with the redacted email that we saw um, that person views the Tartarus society as just basically like a bunch of wackos but they're just like wealthy wackos. They're the people that are giving us the money to fund, you know, what they're doing here um, by placing bets and like losing money and going into debt and probably trying to buy in and all this other stuff. So we're going to continue on. Once we get out of this conversation, I'm going to show you how to get to this bottom area. So this is going to get a little complex, but once you say, no, I'm not ready to leave, um, when you come back this hallway to try to see if you can take the elevator either to the top floor or to the bottom floor of the mansion, the elevator is not going to be there. So yeah, you just walk through the elevator that doesn't exist anymore. You're now back in the hallway going back to the lobby area because at this point, the game is funneling you into just leaving without um, exploring anymore. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to come into this area, into the research development area then turn around and go back into the sub-basement entrance and then walk into the sub-basement hallway then back into the entrance and then back into research and development then back into the entrance then back into research and, de and development, and then through the door, and now the elevator is back.
For this puzzle, you're just rotating each of the statue dials so that they match up with the little stone pedestals that are on the floor um, for each side. So there's one on this side, and then there's one right next to it, and that will open up the passageway to the next section. Once you walk down all of the stairs, you're going to come to this area right here. So this area is basically like you have to do a lot of swapping, like a lot of swapping of the sigil lights, of the stones on the floor, um, just so that all of the lights will power up this stone pedestal and as you can see there's three lights there's three like sections on it so you have to get three beams of light to hit it for it to activate and give you a path So once we walk over here, uh, we're going to get a little bit trippy. 
And also we're going to meet the person who kidnapped us. So I thought that this section was pretty cool. I feel like it's a little bit of a homage to River Song from Doctor Who, so the doctor's wife. For her, the events that are happening currently are events that are happening in the past. But for the doctor, these are events that are happening currently for him and she makes allusions to what would be his future but is really her past yeah i know really confusing but when is space time and like going through portals and all this other stuff and especially everything that's going on in this game with like escape room magic tunnels uh magic portals i mean and like uh rich eccentric dudes betting on you when has it ever made sense?
And with that, we've reached the end of our game, officially. Uh, technically, when we beat ending A, the good ending, uh, that was, you know, the official end. But for this one, uh, the true ending, I feel like, works because it answers any lingering questions that you may have, especially given that um, with those emails that we've read, uh, that kind of just brought up, like, is there something more to this, to this? And in fact, it was. It sounds like from what the entity said that um, them putting people into this uh, escape room mansion is to find a person who is A, worthy of probably completing the ritual uh, to allow the entity to come through, or B, a worthy sacrifice for the entity um, so that he essentially goes dormant for another five years. But since Alex sacrificed herself pushing the entity through the portal back into their plane of existence, we don't have to worry about him trying to take over the world and destroy it whether at the behest of the board of directors who are possibly descendants of the people who first summoned it to begin with and are founders of this organization that probably are worshiping this thing and uh yeah you know now we don't have to worry about him anymore but something that i do kind of wish is that i kind of wish that the game um would give us like a little hopeful epilogue for Alex. Like, I understand she's probably trapped in this other plane of existence or dead, but I do wish that we had some form of, like, a little bit of a hopeful epilogue. If they decide to do a sequel to this, I would definitely love to play it, kind of to see what's going on. Maybe it's Alex going through a hellscape of escape room puzzles, which would be funny and ironic a little bit but you know if they don't end up it was a good story i thought it was a good little um story good indie experience i uh, definitely feel like escape room puzzles and you like uh a little bit of a mystery i would definitely check this game out so with that being said i'm gonna let the rest of this playthrough and I hope that you're enjoying it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.